Write a Check. Let's review the Write a Check feature in MaxTrax. From the toolbar, click the Write Check icon and select a payee from the payee list. Customers, vendors, and employee names are automatically added to this list when their records are created. When searching for a payee, note this is a progressive search so we can start to enter the name or company and double click on their name or highlight the name and click the select button and the check form window will open. Here's a selected payee already filled in the pay to the order of section and the tab key can be used throughout this feature. Now if the payee has the memorize feature checked as you can see on this check to snap on, the check is already filled out with the disbursement and it's ready to print. All we'd have to do is edit the check amount if needed. This is a really great feature for checks you write to the same company for the same thing all the time, like the snap on guy. So let's cancel this check and look up another payee to start a check from scratch. Click the write check icon again and we'll write a check for our utility bill. Remember, this is a progressive search, so I just typed a P, and here is Pacific Gas and Electric. If the payee was not listed, we would click Add Other Payee and add their information to the list. But PG&E is on the list, so just click Select, and it fills in their name and address. If we selected the wrong payee, we could click the Find button to search our list again, but we'll just click Cancel. Now the Amount area is highlighted next, ready for us to enter the amount of the check. We could click Select Above and change the date, or we could just leave it on today's date, which is the default. Now we press the Tab key, and this takes us to the Memo field. The memo prints on the check in the Memo field, so I'll enter the account number for PG&E. Press the Tab button after the memo, and the Check Disbursement window will open. We could have also clicked on the Add Disbursement button to get to this screen. Enter the General Ledger account number, or click the Select button to open the Chart of Accounts window to search from the list. This is also a progressive search. I'm going to enter 6, 9, which will get me to the Utilities section, and I'll select Utilities, Gas, and click the Select button. Now in this case, my PG&E bill is for gas and electric, and PG&E has broken it down on my statement between gas and electric. So let me show you how to do multiple disbursements. I'm first going to edit my disbursement amount to only include the gas portion of my bill, 7522, and I can enter gas in the memo field and click OK. And see here in the lower right, it says I still need to disperse $190.19, so I'll click the Add Disbursement button on the left and search for Utilities again, the electric account this time, select it, enter electric in my memo field and click OK. And notice here with a disbursement line highlighted I could select to edit or delete my entry if needed. Now that I have dispersed the full amount of the check the balance says zero. Let's take a look at the top of the check form. We can select which checking account to write this check from. Just click on the down arrow and select the correct account. We could click the batch print if there were other checks to print saved in the check queue and tag those to be printed as well. And if we were just entering a handwritten check, we would uncheck the to be printed box and enter in the check number we used, but we're going to print this one. We saw how the memorize feature works with a snap on check, so let's go ahead and check that feature for next time. Now let's click post check and select post and close since we're only printing this one check now. Select to print now, as print later would put this check in the check queue. The system verifies the next check number available, and we can change it if needed, and click OK. Now if you're writing a check to pay for parts, say for a parts order that was just delivered by a parts supplier you're not on account with, you would write the check, but post it in a special way to be able to apply that check to a restock parts invoice you eventually will be entering. So please see the training video called Write a Vendor Quick Check for details on that feature. A couple final thoughts. Checks written to pay a vendor bill are typically written from the vendor record after you reconcile the invoices on their account, tag those invoices, and then write the check. And there is a way to write a vendor quick check, as I just mentioned, to pay those restock parts invoices that you're on a cash basis with.
And for a customer refund check, you would first write the credit in the customer record, select to refund that credit, then write them a check. See the refund AR credit training video for details. And last, to enter electronic funds transfers, an ATM withdrawal, or a Visa check card transaction into your check register, just use a write a check function like you're entering a handwritten check, uncheck the to be printed box, and enter EFT, ATM, or I use CKCD for check card purchases, and choose post only. And this concludes the lesson on write a check.